I, I see 10 years from now, if half of the vehicles aren't um, click and delivered um, uh, through the internet, hence not needing that huge uh, physical footprint, um, I'd be really surprised. I, I, I do think that um, uh, consumer behavior is moving more to a um, immediate fulfillment basis. Um, uh, and therefore that, that's where the industry will end up. And the, the traditional franchise model of big showrooms and shiny cars and the, you know, the, there'll be a place for some of that, but I don't think it will be as important as perhaps it is. It was six weeks ago or maybe two, two or five years ago. Yeah, for me, that feels really strange. I mean, I, I love cars. So the idea of just clicking and, and having one delivered the next day, like Amazon Prime, feels a bit bit rubbish for me. But um, Mike, do, do you think, do you agree? Do you think that's something we're going to see in the future? Is it, Are we going to move towards this more instant fulfillment uh, proposition? I think we were moving that way anyway. Um, we've seen you know, a number of the, the big trends happening over the course of the last few years and a number of the brands have put out their retail visions. And I think where we are is just going to accelerate that. Um, you know, we've already seen a lot of the brands moving towards selling direct um, uh, on a monthly payment plan and then the retailer um, uh, basically fulfilling the, 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 the test drives and the handovers, etc. And I think we're going to see that. I agree with Sean. There's going to be more consolidation. It was happening before. That we went into this and I think it's absolutely going to happen uh, as we come out of this. I've had a variety of calls already from people who are um, uh, either looking to buy um, uh, the right things in the right place or, or um, uh, deciding that the whole thing is um, really not, nowhere near as much fun as it used to be. Um, I would expect that will continue and there'll be some businesses that are really going to struggle to, to pay back the debt that everybody's taking on board um, uh, as we go through this, um, this crisis. I mean, ultimately, whether it's the it's the, the, the franchises or, or the retailers. We need to be able to generate enough cash to, to pay this debt down. And, and I see that's going to be a challenge for the industry as we go forwards. We're going to move to, war, um, uh, to wherever the customer really wants us to be. Um, and it's going to be interesting, the balance that the customer gets between the new norm, as we've uh, um, uh, heard about it termed, uh, with these Zoom meetings, with doing more stuff um, uh, being delivered to your house, and the experience of going around a dealership. And I think the physical floor plans of the dealerships will absolutely change. And we might move to servicing hubs and big retail centers and sort of test drives at your house. Um, all that's going to evolve as we go over the course of the next 10 years. But I think this, the, the sort of crisis that we're in has just really pressed the fast forward button on some of that. Um, uh, as customers get used to doing a lot more remotely and, and, and a lot less um, sort of physically in, in dealership. And Tim, are you seeing dealers do anything that's really exciting at the moment that you think might potentially be the future of where the industry is going? There, there are dealers now that are using technology such as this so that now the salesman will in effect be able to have the conversation with the customer live and maybe even have another window open where they can start to present the finance options, <coughs> excuse me, um, that sort of thing. So um, the reliance on physically being there in the show and face to face is, is becoming less and less. I think, if, if anything, the adoption of, of video conferencing has, has shown us that, that we can do this in, in other ways and still have that personal face to face engagement with, with another person. Yeah.